Now let's look at a problem dealing with degree measure. The hour hand of a clock moves from 12 to 1 o'clock. Through how many degrees does it move? Well, recall that a full revolution would be 360 degrees. So we're going 1 12th of 360 degrees, which means we're going to take 1 12th and multiply that times 360 degrees to come up with our result of 30 degrees. Now let's look at a problem dealing with angle measure. In the figure, let the measure of angle DBC equal 19 degrees. Find the measure of angle DBA. Angle DBC can be found by starting at D, moving to B, and going to C. The letter that's in the middle is going to be at the vertex of the angle. So DBC is going to have the measure here of 19 degrees. We're being asked to find the measure of angle DBA. That would be the larger angle that we see in the picture. Now notice that we have the symbol for a right angle here. So what we know is that we have the measure of angle DBC plus the measure of angle DBA equal to that right angle measure of 90 degrees. So to determine this, we're going to take our met 19 degrees for the measure of angle DBC, add that to the measure of angle DBA, and that equals 90 degrees. Subtracting 19 degrees from both sides of the equation is going to give us our result, which is going to be equal to 71 degrees. Here's another problem dealing with angle measure. In the figure, if the measure of angle ABD is 88 degrees greater than the measure of angle DBC, find the measure of each angle. Well, let's make sure we see where those angles are located. ABD would be this angle. DBC is the angle that's right next to it. And notice that the two angles are adjacent to each other and form a straight angle. So therefore, we know that the measure of angle D, B, C, plus the measure of angle A, B, D is going to equal 180 degrees. Now, we know that we're told that the measure of angle A, B, D is 88 degrees greater than the measure of the other angle. If we let X equal the measure of angle D, B, C, then the measure of angle A, B, D, 88 degrees greater, will be X plus 88 degrees giving us an equation that we can solve for x. Let's combine x plus x is 2x plus 88 degrees equals 180 degrees. Subtracting 88 degrees from both sides of the equation, we have 2x equals 92 degrees. And then dividing both sides of the equation by 2 gives us x equals 46 degrees. Now, if x is going to equal 46 degrees, then we're going to find the measure of the second angle by adding 88 degrees to that. So we're going to have our 46 degree angle, and then adding 88 to that is 134 degrees, giving us the measure of our two angles. Now let's look at a problem dealing with the relationship between angles when we have intersecting lines. In the figure, assume that the angle on the left measures 57 degrees. Find the measures of the other three angles. We're going to begin by labeling. I'm going to call this angle to the right angle 1, the angle up at the top I'll call angle 2, and the angle at the bottom I'll call angle 3. To find the measure of angle 1, we're going to notice that this is going to be a vertical angle with the given 57 degree angle. So the measure of angle 1 is going to also be 57 degrees. To find the measure of angle 2, we're going to notice that angle 2, together with the 57 degree angle, forms a straight angle, meaning that they are supplementary to each other. And so we can find the measure of angle 2 by taking 180 degrees minus 57 degrees, which is a difference of 123 degrees. And then finally, if we look at angle 3, we could do the same thing, noticing that we have supplementary angles. Or we could notice that it's going to be a vertical angle with angle 2. And so either way you look at it, the measure of angle 3 is also 123 degrees. Now let's look at the relationship when there's a transversal between parallel lines. In the figure, assume that the measure of angle 8 equals 29 degrees, as shown. Find the measure of each of the other seven angles. 
Well, we can do this in a variety of different orders, but let's go ahead and just notice, first of all, at this first intersection, that if this is the measure of angle 8, 29 degrees, then we can find the measure of angle 1 by using the fact that this is going to be a vertical angle. It will be congruent and therefore have the same measure. Next, we could go to, for instance, angle 6. Here, the measure of angle 6 is going to be found by using the fact that angle 6 together with angle 8 form a straight angle, meaning they're supplementary to each other. So the measure of angle 6 is going to equal 180 degrees minus the 29 degree measure, and that's going to be a difference of 151 degrees. Next, we could go to angle 7. Notice that because it's going to be a vertical angle with angle 6, it will have the same measure as angle 6. So the measure of angle 7 is also 151 degrees. Now we note that we have parallel lines with the transversal drawn between them. We're going to use the fact that, first of all, we could go to angle 5 and notice that it corresponds to angle 8. And the measure of corresponding angles when we have a transversal between parallel lines is going to be the same. So the measure of angle 5 is also going to equal 29 degrees. And now, if we look at the other three angles, we really have the same relationship that we had in the first intersection. We could approach it in that manner. We could also notice some other relationships, and let's go ahead and use those. For instance, we notice that the measure of angle 8 is 29 degrees. Angle 2 is called an alternate interior angle with angle 8, and so it's going to be congruent to the measure of angle 8, and therefore the measure of angle 2 equals 29 degrees. We could look at the measure of angle 4 as being supplementary to angle 2, or we could look at the measure of angle 7 as 151 degrees. Notice that angle 4 corresponds to angle 7, and so it's going to have the same measure. So the measure of angle 4 is 151 degrees. And finally, we could look at the measure of angle 3 as being vertical to the measure of angle 4, or we could say it corresponds to the measure of angle 6, or we could say that it's an alternate interior angle with the measure of angle 7, and any way you look at it, we're going to have the measure of angle 3 equal to 151 degrees.